Okay, thank you. Just to share my screen. Uh, okay, and uh, I hope you can see all the full screen now. Yes. Okay, uh, so this is my presentation. I will talk about uh, something that is uh, like a prior process before opening the data, because this is Open Access Week. We are talking about opening research uh, results, but uh, some processes need to be done uh, before that uh, in order to, to be more reliable and, and especially reusable later. So research data management, uh, like I said, uh, I will explain what is it. I will also uh, try to explain uh, why is it needed, some benefits and uh, some uh, misconceptions that uh, follow uh, data management and opening data, and also uh, some uh, other aspects like uh, data management plans, fair principles, and uh, open data as well. So first, I'll start with this uh, excerpt from the uh, Horizon Europe uh, program guide. And as you can see now, and I'm sure you're familiar for now, that uh, open science is now a new norm. Actually, not very new uh, uh, for now, but uh, it's a norm in science now. And in Horizon Europe, uh, there are some uh, uh, open science practices that are even mandatory. So what does it mean? Uh, besides open access for articles, uh, there should be responsible management of research data, as they say, that is that is uh, following the fair principles. And that is also, uh, there should be a document that is called data management plan. And uh, that eventually that data should be made uh, openly available to uh, general public. But uh, only if uh, certain conditions are met. So what is research data management that is so required by the many funders now and uh, institutions and, uh, and even publishers now? So uh, research data management uh, refers to the organization, storage and preservation sharing of data that was generated or collected and used in a research project. Uh, by research data, we mean on information that has been collected, observed, generated, uh, and uh, uh, that is created to validate origin original research findings. And uh, it is not just uh, research data that needs to be managed. Uh, it also uh, all other information that accompanies uh, this uh, data uh, should be uh, well documented as well, like uh, metadata and uh, other documentation like readme files, protocols, software, uh, code, code books, uh, vocabularies, and so on. So uh, research data management is in a way an uh, 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 example of a good research practice. And uh, when you are uh, managing your data, you should keep in mind uh, the two main objectives uh, of this is that you make your data uh, safe and secured, uh, well-preserved, uh, safe and secured during your active phase and well-preserved after uh, the research is, uh, is over. And uh, the other thing you should keep in mind is that data should be reusable. That means that uh, you should uh, practice everything that is necessary in order for that data to be uh, findable by others uh, and, uh, and more important to be understandable. When somebody finds that data, that should, it should, uh, he or she should know uh, what uh, they can do with this data and in what terms uh, and conditions. Uh, so why do, uh, everybody insists now on, uh, on the research data management and what are the benefits and commons, common misconceptions. Uh, as you know, science relies now heavily on uh, computers uh, for doing uh, the, the research. And uh, that is why uh, research data management has to provide that uh, all the data and the metadata uh, have to be 
uh, ready for consumption, not only just, not just by humans, but also by the machines as well. Uh, so some benefits that uh, are uh, come with uh, res good research data man management is uh, that uh, data sets are more transparent. The whole research process is more transparent with uh, uh, data uh, with good uh, data uh, good managed data, and that means that uh, research is going to be uh, better to in reproducibility. Uh, this whole uh, concept improves your scientific communication and as well as your uh, cooperation with, especially with other research teams that are uh, not uh, involved in your research product, but are, are going to use your data later on. And uh, eventually it will all increase your scientific and, uh, impact and also your citations. Uh, another Key, uh, think uh, that is also beneficial is uh, safety of your data. Uh, good data management practices prevent data loss, and they also uh, prevent uh, from keeping uh, uh, unauthorized access uh, to your data. And sometimes it is uh, very much important. Uh, the other things uh, that are beneficial are uh, redu uh, reduction of uh, duplication of efforts that can be uh, very beneficial for your budget, especially if uh, you are doing uh, some expensive uh, uh, research projects, uh, or uh, also uh, it is good with you know, ethical reasons, especially where, when uh, you're doing, uh, for example, some experiments on animals that uh, in this case, maybe they shouldn't be repeated with good managed uh, data and that is understandable, you can reuse others' uh, data and, uh, or, and do your research without compromising uh, life to animals. And it's also not just for animals, but also for humans to not repeat uh, some uh, especially long uh, time studies uh, for on human patients. Uh, you can just reuse <clears throat> some other data. And also, these are not benefits, but uh, it is required uh, now by funders and institutions and uh, publishers as well. So uh, some basic uh, misconceptions that uh, come along with this, uh, especially with opening data, is uh, that researchers are usually afraid of uh, they will use they will uh, uh, give away the control over their data and they are afraid of uh, being scooped by others that somebody else could uh, will collect that data and do the uh, research analysis and publish the work even before them. Uh, that is nothing to be uh, afraid of because uh, once you publish your data or even your metadata, so data about the data, uh, when you published it, there is usually a, a timestamp, so it is uh, a good advice so somebody can uh, see that uh, you were the first uh, to uh, publish the data uh, before uh, anybody else. Um, but also, like I said, but I will repeat it uh, again afterwards, uh, there are some restrictions. Sometimes you don't have to open your data not, and uh, you don't need to open your data. And sometimes you have the option to open your data after some embargo uh, period of time in order to uh, maximize the, the impact of that data and to write your articles and to publish your work. Um, another misconception is the fear of wrong data interpretation. Uh, this is... Uh, Again, uh, somewhere where research data management comes in handy uh, uh, with, like I said, with good documentation, good, uh, uh, good metadata, your research data can be interpreted right and there is no fear of wrong interpretation. And uh, also uh, there is a fear of uh, breaching data privacy, IPR issues, like I said, again, with re good re RDM practices, 
this uh, uh, these problems can be can be resolved in time. Um, another thing to consider is uh, that uh, research data management is often uh, considered as administrative burden. That means a lot of extra work that needs to be done, uh, usually by researchers, and usually they are um, heavily involved in research, and now they have to do even this another task. Uh, that is of, often uh, uh, part of complaints, but uh, uh, there are, uh, you know, data stewards, there are librarians, there are administrative research support staff that can help you with, uh, with this, and they are very eager to do so. So, in fact, all these issues can be solved with good uh, research data management practices. Uh, research data management is not just plain, uh, is not just uh, at the end of your research when you finish your project and you want to publish your data. Uh, good data management should be done throughout the whole uh, research data life, life cycle, uh, through the uh, part before the research uh, and after the active phase of research and uh, even uh, long after the research is done. So uh, one thing to, to begin with the planning phase is to consider to write a data management plan. Uh, it is a document that specifies how this data will be managed during and after the research uh, project. Uh, these data management plans are now uh, mandatory in most of the uh, by, by most of the research funders, but even if they're not mandatory, you should be uh, write this down. Uh, one thing, uh, what should be there in the, this uh, data management plan is to, uh, you should uh, uh, design your research, you should uh, identify existing res data resources that are you're going to reuse, uh, how are you going to generate your data, how are you going to collect it, process it, uh, what security measures are you going to use and uh, how that data will eventually be ready for publishing and uh, long-term preservation. And also it should include all the costs that in, are involved with uh, this uh, uh, management, managing. Uh, to help you with this writing of these data management plans, there are uh, most of the funders and institutions developed uh, what is called so-called DMP templates uh, with uh, questions that should be to guide you through all uh, whole this process, and also there are uh, uh, some uh, tools available. This is just an example of uh, one of these uh, a screenshot of one of these tools. It's called Argos by OpenAir. You see you have a question from this data management template and you have some hints on what you should assign, write this down and uh, there is a field for writing. Uh, uh, there are many uh, uh, these uh, DMP tools that you can use like DMP online, Argos, uh, DMP tool, data stewardship wizard, you should find it more on internet. And the uh, published uh, DMP uh, looks like a regular document uh, that anybody can read and uh, they can know uh, what did you do with your uh, data. But it is also very uh, good practice for your team members to know what should they do with your data, especially for the team members that, that come uh, not from the beginning of the project, but on some later phases, they, they can uh, be familiar with uh, how uh, the, the data management is going to be done. Uh, and also these DMPs can be uh, rewritten, uh, revised uh, later in the process if something changes in, in your project. Uh, uh, what should be uh, written, like I said, in this uh, data management is everything you have on those, your research uh, data lifecycle. How you're going to organize your data, how you're going to name your files and folders, folder structure, version control, 
Uh, also, you have to keep in mind uh, what file formats are you going to use, and uh, there are some good and bad uh, practices you can uh, find, but we don't have much time for this. Uh, also, uh, keep in mind that you keep your uh, documentation during the whole process uh, and uh, try to, to manage it. Uh, documentation is any descriptive and contextual information that is needed to understand and uh, reuse your research data. So like readme files, uh, notebooks, uh, code books, uh, software code, and et cetera. Uh, another thing to consider is metadata. It is most uh, definition could be will be uh, data about uh, data. It is used to describe and annotate uh, your data. Uh, it's highly structured, machine readable form of data documentation. So, ask your librarian they, they, uh, or data steward. They know a lot of, of these things. I will not go in specific details here. Uh, another thing to consider also is your uh, safety of your data. A uh, good thing is uh, during your active phase to have a backup plan and also to have uh, some uh, way of controlling the ac uh, access uh, to your data sets, either by uh, password protection or encryption. It is up to you and you should uh, deliver it in, uh, write it down in your DMP. When you are uh, sharing and publishing your data there are ways of uh, how to do it uh, the best way is to publish it in your repository there are specialized like data libraries for that uh, and uh, how can you choose your repository there are domain specific there are general uh, repositories like zenodo dryad figshare and so on osf and also there are institutional data repositories. Uh, this is something that you should uh, consider with your, uh, your, with your research team and also ask your librarians or, or uh, data managers uh, in order to help you choose the right uh, option. Also provide an, uh, rich metadata with your data sets when you are depositing them in uh, repositories and uh, choose right license for that. There is also a good way of publishing your data in uh, uh, data journals that are specifically designed for uh, explaining your data sets. Uh, another uh, thing, uh, yes, is after you finish your research is uh, the, uh, you should uh, think of how to uh, uh, preserve your data uh, for long term. Uh, you should select your data uh, and you should se uh, select uh, good open and sustainable file formats for long term preservation purposes. And also archive not just data, but also documentation the file date data. Uh, I will not go in details with fair, fair principles because of lack of time, but I will just consider this uh, as very much important. They are uh, not standards, they are just guidelines uh, or principles uh, that uh, lead you to how well to organize access and understand uh, your data in order to be reused, not just by humans, but also by machines. Uh, so why is they needed? Because like I said, uh, humans are now uh, more relying on computer support uh, uh, in their, doing their research. Fair principles enable you to find access, interoperate and reuse this data with no or minimal human intervention. Uh, in order, when you want to, to open your data, just first consider this, good research data management practices needs to be your basis for this. Go after you manage your data good and wrote your data management plan and uh, consider all things you had for, for good uh, data management practices, uh, then when opening uh, your data, you should consider, is it fair enough? Uh, make it more uh, in line with fair principles so it can be machine interoperable. 
and reusable. And uh, after that, uh, like a final process, if you want to open your data in that case, you should be uh, uh, opening your data in that way. Uh, and one thing to consider is uh, with opening data, uh, there are some uh, things that you should consider before that, uh, because there are some legal, ethical, and other considerations that uh, sometimes you don't, uh, you have to be aware of out and uh, like in Horizon Europe and uh, this uh, down line is almost everywhere that you should make your data as open as possible, as closed as necessary, that means that if there are some legal restrictions to, to close your data, you should uh, not make it, it open, open uh, accessible because uh, that can be illegal and unethical. So to conclude everything, um, like I said, manage your data throughout the entire research data lifecycle, not just at the end, but from the early beginning, from the even planning of your research. Uh, develop your data management plan. Uh, uh, it is mandatory but most by most of the funders, but uh, even if not so, uh, it is a good uh, practice to do to make uh, uh, your data management plan uh, when you start your project. Uh, also familiarize yourselves with the policies of research funders, institutions, or publishers, uh, because most of them are now requiring uh, you to, to deliver your data, uh, your data sets. Uh, and also uh, uh, always get to know that your uh, good, that your RDM uh, aligns with fair principles. And also, like I said, open your data whenever it is possible that is uh, like common sense but uh, but uh, sometimes it is not possible so you should keep mind of that and also uh, seek assistance from your uh, research support services so there are a lot of people in your libraries and some institutions even appointed data stewards and repository managers and uh, ask around it support is also valuable, ask around and uh, who can help you with this. And it, with this help, a uh, whole research data management process uh, doesn't have to be administrative burden, like it said. So thank you. And if there are questions, please.